Welcome to the Florida Department of Transportation's Grant Application Instruction Training for Federal Fiscal Year 2020. The goals of this training are to discuss best practices in project development, familiarize applicants with the forms and exhibits in the FDOT Section 5310, Section 5311, and Section 5339 applications prepare agencies to complete eligible and competitive applications, and spark questions to bring to the November 14th open house. Before you complete a grant application, you will need to develop the project for which you will be requesting funds. Three steps must be completed before you will be ready to craft your grant application. Identifying needs, engaging partners, and determining cost. To identify your organization's needs, First, look to the plans, studies, and initiatives that have already been completed. What were the top priority findings and recommendations, and how might they be addressed by introducing a new project? Think about how to best meet these needs using projects that are eligible for funding under the grant program. For example, you may have a bus that has met its useful life, but in recent years, most runs carry two to four passengers at a time. Choosing to replace the bus with an MV1 or accessible minivan may provide substantial savings on long-term operating costs. Or if your agency struggles to submit required reports on time due to limited data capacity, new hardware or software may streamline processing. Next, you must engage your partners in the project development process. Be sure to involve a broad group of voices throughout the process, including agency leadership, staff from multiple departments, clients and passengers, and partner organizations. You might already coordinate with some of these groups, but others may require special outreach efforts. Ask them what, from their perspective, would be the best use of grants funds towards improving your transportation program. Once you have come to a consensus on what projects to include in your application, costs must be determined. Obtain quotes and estimates from potential vendors and your agency's budgets. Once you have an idea of the overall cost, make sure that you know where the required local match will be coming from. Finally, think about ongoing costs in addition to upfront costs, especially for capital purchases. Project the capital, operating, and maintenance cost over the life cycle of the project equipment or service. Once you decide to submit an application, set up a plan to complete all steps within the required time frame. It is a good idea to host a kickoff meeting with your diverse group of collaborators. Use this meeting to discuss the project concept and to delegate application development tasks to responsible parties. Finalize the award request type and dollar amount. Collect supporting data from internal and external sources. Write the application. Obtain board approval and CTC agreement. Have your authorized representative sign the completed application. Then. Submit the completed application. Each grant application must pass through the district rank and review process on the way to award. First, each fall, FDOT announces the availability of funds and hosts a grant workshop. Agencies then work on completing their applications, while FDOT is available to provide technical assistance as requested. All applications must be submitted by the FDOT District 5 application deadline. The federal fiscal year 2020 application deadline is January 24, 2020. Following the deadline, the district compiles and analyzes each application for award eligibility in preparation for the district rank and review committee meeting. The rank and review committee includes FDOT project coordinators, MPO and transit agency staff, and oversight consultants. Committee members are given two to three weeks to review applications prior to the meeting. At the meeting, applications are discussed and assigned scores by each committee member. These scores are then used to determine which projects will be prioritized for award. Next, the district develops a program of projects, or POP. The POP includes all projects recommended for award. The district submits the POP to FDOT's central office in Tallahassee, typically in March or April of each year. FDOT's central office then incorporates the POP into a statewide grant application to the FTA. FTA then approves the statewide grant application. 
Following FTA's approval, the grant funds are ready for award. The district awards funds to agencies for selected projects using a notice of grant award or public transportation grant agreement. The Rank and Review Committee uses the following six criteria to evaluate Section 5310 applications. Service efficiency and effectiveness. Applicants providing transportation service for more hours and whose vehicles carry more passengers per hour will be ranked higher than applicants providing fewer overall hours of service with fewer passengers per hour. Extent to which the community at large is served by the applicant. Applicants serving the highest community need through social service agencies and providing the most trips to seniors and individuals with disabilities will be ranked higher. Extent to which seniors and individuals with disabilities are served. Applicants will be evaluated on the percentage of total riders or passengers served that are senior and or individuals with disabilities. Those serving a higher percentage of these groups will be ranked higher. Need. Applicants that can demonstrate they serve or propose to serve the largest number of eligible passengers and have the most urgent financial needs will be ranked higher. FDOT has a goal to preserve transportation infrastructure. Therefore, maintaining current levels of service may be deemed a higher priority than expanding into new services or expanding service area coverage. While each of the preceding evaluation criteria ensures that the project aligns with the Section 5310 program's purpose, the final two criteria are foundational to predicting an applicant's ability to carry out the project. Fiscal and managerial capability. Applicants with well-documented budgets and good fiscal capability demonstrated by the correctness and completeness of their application, prior audits, proper maintenance of vehicles, and previous timeliness and accuracy of required reports will be ranked higher. Prior performance. Applicants who have a history of meeting contractual obligations and maintenance requirements for Section 5310 vehicles will be ranked higher. Compliance with the Annual Operating Report, or AOR, to area CTCs may also be considered. New applicants will not be penalized for having little or no history with the FDOT, but we will do an on-site visit prior to award. Fiscal and managerial capability and prior performance are evaluated for each applicant using the recipient risk assessment tool. These assessments are completed prior to the Rank and Review Committee meeting and are based on the review of each agency's. Financial stability. Quality of management systems. Performance history. Audit reports. And SAM.gov profile. All applicants must have an active SAM.gov profile for the risk assessment to be completed. If your profile is not already active, be sure to register as soon as possible so your application will be eligible for review. There are two documents that you must use concurrently to complete a successful Section 5310 grant application. The first is Section 5310 Instruction Manual for Capital and Operating Assistance Applications for State Fiscal Year 2021. The instruction manual contains general program information, including eligibility requirements, state and federal Section 5310 compliance requirements, instructions to complete each form and exhibit, and resources and links. The second document is the Section 5310 grant application itself. The application is provided in a Word format so you can type your answers directly into the document and insert pages as needed. Section 5311 and Section 5339 are separate funding programs from Section 5310, and applicants must complete a separate grant application for each funding program. For more information about the Section 5311 and Section 5339 programs, please refer to the video for Module 1 of this training series. Grant Programs Introduction. The required components of the Section 5311 and 5339 applications are very similar to Section 5310 application that we will walk through in this video. In addition, both Sections 5311 and 5339 have corresponding application instruction manuals where you can find program eligibility 
and compliance requirements, along with step-by-step -step instructions for each required form and exhibit. The first item you will find in the Section 5310 application is the checklist. Each applicable item in the checklist must be submitted with your grant application in the same sequence as the checklist. If you aren't sure whether an item is required for your agency, check the instruction manual. Once you are certain that a form or exhibit does not apply to your application, indicate in the checklist by striking through the form or exhibit title in the checklist, and by writing a brief explanation of why the item is not applicable under the form or exhibit title where it appears later in the application. To help applicants quickly ascertain whether an item applies to their award request type, form and exhibit titles are color coded. Titles printed in purple text apply to both capital and operating requests. Titles printed in blue apply only to operating requests. And titles printed in red apply only to capital requests. If your agency is applying for both capital and operating awards, please submit one application with all items included. Do not submit two separate applications. Only one Section 5310 application package will be accepted from each agency. The applicant information table must be submitted with every application. Under applicant status, indicate whether your agency is a first time or returning applicant. A first time applicant is an agency that has no active FDOT funded vehicles at the time of application submittal and has not received new FDOT grant funding for the past two grant cycles. Under project service area, indicate the geographical area types that your proposed project will serve. Large urban, small urban, or non-urban, sometimes called rural. If you aren't sure, please refer to the video for module one of this training series, Grant Programs Introduction. A blue ink signature from your agency's authorized representative is required. We will discuss the designation of an authorized representative shortly when we walk through Exhibit B, the Governing Board's Resolution. Part 1 of the application includes an eligibility questionnaire and eight exhibits. The purpose of this section is to assess your agency's eligibility for award by verifying that all required coordination activities have been completed and that your organization type is one of those eligible for award. For more information on the organization types eligible for award under Section 5310 program, please refer to the subsection titled Eligible Recipients in Section 2 of the Instruction Manual. The eligibility questionnaire must be completed by all returning applicants. A returning applicant is one that has FDOT funded vehicles in its fleet at the time of application submittal or has received new FDOT grant funding during either the last two grant cycles. The eligibility questionnaire investigates whether current grant subrecipients are compliant with all FDOT and FTA Section 5310 requirements. If a current grant subrecipient is non-compliant, the agency will not be eligible to receive grant award until compliance has been verified. The Section 5310 Program Performance Measures Annual Report is required component of the Annual Certification Package, submitted every January for all agencies with active Section 5310 awards. For more information on this report, see the Program Performance Measures subsection of Instruction Manual Section 3, Section 5310 Compliance Requirements. The Eligibility Questionnaire also includes a reminder to make sure that your agency's SAM.gov profile is active. FDOT requires all applicants to have an active SAM.gov profile for use during the Recipient Risk Assessment as part of the application review and award determination. Please be sure that your SAM.gov profile is not hidden from public search results. Exhibit A is the application's cover letter. Sample cover letter language is included in the grant application. The language confirms that your agency agrees to comply with all assurances included in the application and further agrees to identify FDOT losses arising from the applicant's noncompliance with these assurances. Place the sample text on your agency's letterhead, fill in your agency's name where indicated, and make sure the final letter is signed by the authorized representative in blue ink. Exhibit B is the Governing Board's Resolution. The purpose of the resolution is to authorize one agency representative to submit the grant application, 
sign the application components, and accept the resulting grant award on behalf of the designated agency. Sample resolution language is included in the grant application. The resolution must identify the authorized representative by name and title. The original resolution must be provided on agency letterhead and signed by the chairperson of the board in blue ink. Plan early to ensure that you will have time for your agency's governing board to adopt the resolution before the application due date. Early adoption is particularly important during this year's grant application cycle because of a new note that has been added to Section 5 of the Application Instruction Manual. The note states that all signature pages must be completed following the board resolution date. If you are concerned that your agency's governing board will not be able to adopt the resolution prior to the application deadline, you must notify your FDOT project coordinator as soon as possible. Application missing an adopted resolution or authorized signatures without documented notice to the department will be disqualified from review. Exhibit C certifies that the proposed project is included in the locally coordinated Public Transit Human Service Transportation Plan. FTA requires all Section 5310 projects to be included in such a plan. To qualify, the plan must be developed through a process that includes representatives of public, private, and nonprofit transportation and human services providers and participation by members of the public. For most applicants, this plan will be a Transportation Disadvantaged Service Plan, or TDSP. TDSPs are prepared and adopted by the Local Community Transportation Coordinator. A Community Transportation Coordinator, or CTC, is an entity designated by the Florida Commission for Transportation Disadvantage to coordinate and or provide transportation services to individuals who are transportation disadvantaged. One CTC is designated for each county in the state of Florida. All Section 5310 applicant agencies that are not designated a CTC must coordinate with the CTC in their service area to ensure inclusion in the TDSP. If your agency's service area includes multiple counties, you may be required to coordinate with more than one CTC. Once you have identified the plan by name, date, and adopting entity, you must cite the section or page of the plan that references the project or the need your agency is fulfilling. The exhibit must then be signed by an authorized representative in blue ink. Exhibit D is where you will attach the CTC agreement or certification. If your agency is not the CTC, you must enter into a CTC agreement. These agreements ensure that services are coordinated efficiently across the service area and prevent duplication of service. They also enable the accurate measurement and reporting of transportation disadvantaged service demand in each area. Remember, if your service area includes multiple counties, you may need to execute coordinated agreements with more than one CTC. If your agency is a CTC, Exhibit D requires you to provide your current CTC certification from the Florida Commission for the Transportation Disadvantaged. Please ensure that the agreement or certification included with the application is executed and has not expired. CTC agreements must be kept current and valid at all times while receiving an award under the Section 5310 program and throughout the useful life of any grant-funded vehicles and equipment. Exhibit E is the Certification of Incorporation. This exhibit is required if you are applying as a first-time private nonprofit agency. If applicable, you may submit the certification as a PDF or print and attach a document to your final application in the correct sequence. Exhibit F is where all private nonprofit agency applicants must upload their proof of nonprofit status. If applicable, you may submit the proof of status as a PDF or print and attach the document to your final application in the correct sequence. If you do not already have this documentation on file, it can be obtained from the Florida Department of State's Division of Corporations at sunbiz.org. Exhibit G, the cover letter to your local clearinghouse agency or regional planning council, is required only if the grant application is requesting funding for facility projects. If your agency plans to submit a Section 5310 application for facility funding, please contact District 5 well ahead of the application deadline to ensure that all requirements are met. Exhibit H, the public hearing notice, is only required for public agencies requesting capital grants. If Exhibit H is required for your agency and request type, 
The application must include both the copy of the public hearing notice and an affidavit of publication. Sample public notice language is provided in the application. The notice should contain all pertinent information relating to the project, including the number and types of vehicles being requested along with the estimated cost. The notice should be published at least one time in a newspaper in your agency service area, no fewer than 15 or more than 30 days before the application is submitted. The notice should state that the persons requesting a hearing must notify the applicant of the request in writing and send a copy of the request for a hearing to the FDOT district office. The deadline for a hearing request must be prior to the date of the application is due to the district office. If a hearing is requested, it must be conducted. The FDOT district office must be notified of the hearing's date, time, and location, and a copy of the hearing minutes must be submitted to the FDOT district office before an award may be executed. Part two of the application is where you'll describe your funding request and make the case for award. The seven forms in this section require significant attention. Overall, they should provide compelling evidence that your proposed project will be successfully carried out and in doing so, meet the purpose of the Section 5310 program to provide enhanced mobility to seniors and people with disabilities. Form A1, Current System Description, includes a series of prompts designed to provide reviewers with a comprehensive understanding of your agency's transportation program. You'll be asked to provide a short description of your agency and its services. Attach an organizational chart, including all transportation-related positions were indicated. Some prompts indicate a word count, which your response must not exceed. When completing this form, you should be thinking particularly about how your responses serve to demonstrate your transportation program's fiscal and managerial capability to reviewers. The Form A2 fact sheet is used to assess the anticipated quantitative impacts of the proposed project if funds are awarded. For each measure, use the space provided to show your calculations or cite data sources. For example, the first measure in the form asks for the number of total one-way trips your agency provides each year. A one-way passenger trip is provided each time a passenger enters the vehicle, is transported, and then exits the vehicle. If a passenger visits more than one destination along a trip chain, each segment between destinations will count as a passenger trip. By serving 400 client trips to two locations, five days per week, 52 weeks per year, the agency shows that it provides roughly 208,000 trips per year under its current system. If the grant is awarded, the agency anticipates that it will be able to accommodate an additional 40 clients for a total of 440. Without any other service changes, the agency projects that it would then provide 228,800 trips per year. Form A3 is your proposed project summary. This form contains prompts that you must follow to define the purpose of your funding request and split the amounts by service area. Some prompts can only be completed once you determine the exact dollar amount of your request using form B2 and B3. You should acknowledge all impacts that the proposed award would have on your transportation program. For example, if requesting a vehicle that requires a CDL driver, do you have enough appropriately licensed drivers on staff? If you will hire your agency's first CDL driver upon award, are you prepared to meet the associated medical certification and substance abuse management requirements? Showing that your agency has a plan in place to address new or changing circumstances that may be introduced by the award will significantly strengthen your application. Take the opportunity to craft responses that address each of the evaluation criteria. In particular, this form should demonstrate need, the extent to which eligible recipients and the community are served, and your agency's fiscal and managerial capability. Form B1 assesses your agency's financial capacity using three parts. The first part is the proposed budget for your overall transportation program. Enter the operating budget amounts as projected for the fiscal year that will start during the 2020 calendar year. Each line item indicates a number of parentheses that corresponds to a National Transit Database definition. To read the definitions, reference the Application Instruction Manual. The first table requests estimated operating revenues. 
be sure to include all projected federal grant revenues, including any Section 5310 operating funds being requested in this application. The second table requests estimated operating expenses. The amount of the grant total all revenues line should match the grant total all expense amount. The shortfall table is newly added to this year's application. This table will be used to show any difference between estimated expenses and revenues for the projected budget year. In line 1, enter the grand total all revenue amount minus any Section 5310 operating funds being requested in this application. In line 2, transpose the grand total all expenses amount exactly as shown in the estimated expense table. In line 3, calculate the budget shortfall by subtracting line 2 from line 1. In line 4, enter the total Section 5310 operating amount requested in this application. If the requested operating award amount exceeds the amount necessary to cover the shortfall, written justification must be provided in the last line of the table. The final section of Form B1 is the Proof of Local Match table. Here you must list all sources and amounts of the proposed project's local share. As a reminder, a 50% local match is required for operating awards, and a 10% local match is required for capital awards. Attach documentation of each funding source's match availability directly after Form B1 in your finished application package. Acceptable proof may include an official allocation or a written funding commitment from the identified source. The authorized representative must sign Form B1 in blue ink where indicated. Form B2 is the operation phase estimate of project costs by budget category. If you are requesting operating assistance, this form may ultimately serve as your project budget. Therefore, you should only include the subset of operating expenses which are eligible under the Section 5310 program. For some agencies, all of your passengers may fall into these groups. In that case, this form may closely resemble Form B1, your overall transportation program operating budget. For agencies that provide transportation service to the general public, Form B2 should only include shares of transportation operating expenses which are applicable to the Section 5310 program. Refer back to the NTD definitions provided with Form B1 for detail on each budget category. If you are including additional budget categories under other direct costs, be sure to label each line. Examples of other direct costs include materials and supplies, licensing and taxes, insurance and utilities. Indirect costs should only be included if you have an approved cost allocation plan on file with the department or will provide one with this application. Because the department is sensitive to changing circumstances, the amount assigned to a given budget category can be shifted between line items after a public transportation grant agreement has been executed without an amendment. However, keep in mind that your FDOT project coordinator must approve the revision before expenses are incurred under the new or increased line item amount. If you are applying for capital award, Form B3 requires that you provide the details including a clear description of each item and its useful life. Estimated costs must be supported by order forms or quotes. You can find most vehicle order forms on the TRIPS website, tripsflorida.org. For more information about the TRIPS program, please refer to the video for Module 2 of this training series, TRIPS Program and Procurement. If your capital request includes replacement vehicles, each vehicle being replaced must be listed in the table in descending order of priority. The last item in Form B3 requires you to combine the vehicle and equipment subtotals to calculate the total capital request amount. Finally, calculate the federal share of your capital request by multiplying the total by 80%. Form C is the current vehicle and transportation equipment inventory. An asterisk must be placed next to the model year of vehicles proposed for replacement with this application. The inventory should include all vehicles used to provide passenger service not only those funded by the FDOT. Vehicles on order, but not yet delivered, should also be included. Part three of the application contains 10 required documents used to assess your agency's managerial capability and make required assurances. 
Exhibit I, the FDOT Certification and Assurances, is required for all applicants. This exhibit is an assurance that all FDOT grant program requirements will be met. It includes important insurance, maintenance, accident reporting, audit, and oversight review requirements. Exhibit J, the standard lobbying certification, is required for all applicants. This exhibit certifies that your agency has not and will not use federal funds for lobbying activities. It must be signed by your agency's authorized representative. Exhibit K, the leasing certification, is required for all capital applications, even if your agency does not plan to lease out the requested vehicles. It must specify whether your agency plans to lease the requested vehicles or equipment to a third party and be signed by the authorized representative. Exhibit L, the Certification of Equivalent Service, is required for all applicants requesting inaccessible vehicles and must be signed by the authorized representative. The Standard Form 424, Application for Federal Assistance, is required for all applicants. This form is used to include your project in the statewide grant application to be submitted to the FTA. The Application Instruction Manual contains line-by-line -line instructions to complete Form 424. In addition, FDOT District 5 provides the form with the items which should have identical responses for all applicants already completed. Once completed, insert the form as a PDF or print and attach to your final application package in the correct sequence. Exhibit M is the Federal Certification and Insurances. Like the FDOT Certification and Insurances and Exhibit I, this exhibit is a list of program requirements to which your agency must adhere if awarded federal funds. Exhibit M must be signed by your agency's legal representative. When providing the FTA certification and insurances to the FDOT, please include only the checklist and signature pages shown here. FTA certification and insurances are updated annually. In recent years, the annual update has not been published before the application deadline. For example, the Federal Fiscal Year 2019 version was published on March 13, 2019. If this is again the case, please simply note that the exhibit will be completed upon publication by the FTA. We will notify all applicants when the Federal Fiscal Year 2020 certification and insurances are published. Exhibit N is where returning Section 5310 only applicants will attach the Transportation Operating Procedures, or TOP, if the most current version is not on file with the district office. The TOP is the required operations and safety policy document adopted by agencies which receive Section 5310 and no other types of transit grant funds. Exhibit O is where all returning applicants must attach the Title VI plan if the most current version is not on file with the district office. A Title VI plan describes an agency's program to ensure that no person is excluded from participation in a program that receives federal financial assistance on the basis of race, color, or national origin. Exhibit P, Protection of the Environment, is required only if the grant application is requesting funding for facilities projects. If your agency plans to submit a Section 5310 application for facilities funding, please contact District 5 well ahead of the application deadline to ensure that all requirements are met. Exhibit Q is the Triennial Review Cap Closeout. This exhibit is required if your agency's most recent triennial review included a corrective action plan, or CAP. A CAP outlines all review findings and recommended strategies for remediation. Attach a copy of the most recent CAP or letter of compliance provided by the FDOT under Exhibit Q. That brings us to the end of our Section 5310 application walkthrough. Time for some important reminders. The federal certifications and insurances must be signed by your agency's legal representative. All applicant agencies must register on SAM.gov for the Recipient Risk Assessment. The Recipient Risk Assessment template is available for review within the Application Instruction Manual. Register your agency as a vendor with My Florida Marketplace if you are submitting an application for Operating Assistance or Equipment Awards. Your application will not be processed if it's incomplete, illegible, or contains unsigned forms. All applications must be submitted on time. Late applications will not be considered. 
There are several important CTC coordination requirements, including that an executed CTC agreement or certification must be included with each application, and the CTC must review all applications for agreement and project eligibility determination. All federal fiscal year 2020 section 5310, 5311, and 5339 applications are due to the FDOT District 5 by 5 p.m. on Friday, January 24, 2020. Late applications will not be accepted. Applicants must provide one original hard copy and an electronic version of the entire application. Hard copies should be delivered to 420 West Land Street Road, Orlando, Florida, 32824. Make sure you obtain proof of delivery. Thank you for participating in this training session. Please reach out to your FDOT project coordinator with any questions.